After all, what's a heart for? Well, at times it's handy for falling in love. Yes, but also it's a sort of pump which circulates the blood. Especially when someone is in love. And the blood, just what is it? Well, I wouldn't want to disappoint you, but our blood, your blood, to start with, is 60% water, along with salt, proteins in the form of albumin, and fat in the form of cholesterol, which are dissolved in the water. This is what the specialists call plasma. Water, yes, but a very interesting kind of water that transports I don't know how many billions of corpuscles and other things, which travel in turn through I don't know how many thousands of miles of tubes, arteries, arterioles, veins, veinlets and blood vessels, to bring life to I don't know how many billions of tiny cells which I am made of. Which he and she are made of. So, with the red and white corpuscles, the blood platelets, and the antibodies all going on a free ride, it's just like the busiest of expressways during rush hours. Let's take you, for instance, Mr. Red Corpuscle. What's your job? He's busy replenishing. There he goes into the lung, where he loads up with oxygen, and he will take it to a cell. The cell, on the one hand, takes the oxygen, and on the other hand, the sugar or the fat, and carries out its cell work. It's a bit like an engine, creating the products of combustion, primarily out of carbonic gas. And rather than returning empty, the red corpuscle fills up with carbonic gas and returns it to the lung. where I am supposed to breathe it out. Provided they let me. <coughs> In reality, when magnified thousands of times, they rather look like this. Yes, the poor things are not very photogenic, are they? As for the white corpuscles, they're not much better, so let's go on with our story and with illustrations. The white corpuscles are concerned with defense. Defense against all trespassers, bacilli, germs, viruses, and Lord knows how many other types of foreign cells that endanger our body. The biggest of the white corpuscles are called polynuclears. They make no bones about their business, which is to say they get right to the point. The lymphocytes, the smallest of the white corpuscles, are by far the shrewdest. They are never on the hunt, but instead, they produce what is called antibodies. If you're vaccinated to fight a specific disease, let's say typhoid, the lymphocytes learn how to develop antibodies that fight against typhoid. And because they have a fantastic memory, lymphocytes are immediately able not only to identify the germ at first glance, but to reproduce on the spot thousands of the right antibodies. So that if one day a couple of typhoid germs should happen to drop by, well, let's just say I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. Well then, these antibodies that are busy protecting us, some against typhoid, others against diphtheria, and others against such deadly diseases as tetanus, it's all very interesting, and I think you should say thanks to the white corpuscles for this. Thank you, white corpuscles. But there are also those antibodies that can produce themselves without your having to be vaccinated. Some allegedly protect the body against cells which could come from someone next to you 
which cells don't necessarily mean any harm. Red corpuscles, for example. All of your red corpuscles are of one type, let's say type A. But if you received some red corpuscles from group B, your antibodies against B, which are always on the alert, would leave immediately to hunt down all those corpuscles labeled B. It could produce a very dangerous reaction. They are incompatible. There is also what one calls anti-rhesus antibodies, but that's another story. All this means that rigorous rules must be applied when a transfusion occurs between people of different blood types. Yes, blood is all of this. Plasma, red corpuscles, leukocytes, lymphocytes, proteins, antibodies. Ah, I almost forgot. The team of plumbers, that is to say the platelets, the fibrinogen, and other coagulation factors. If there is a leak somewhere, they are the ones that will stop it. Yes, it is this teeming little world that gives life to your cells and to you, I hope, for as long a time as possible. However, they themselves don't live to a ripe old age. The red corpuscles, for example, who load up with oxygen, unload their oxygen, refill with carbonic gas, unload the carbonic gas, load up with oxygen, etc., 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 etc. Well, at the end of 120 days of so many round trips, the poor things are just all washed up and so they have to be taken out of service. But never mind. Somewhere in the bone marrow or in the spleen, they are being reproduced non-stop. Suppose a half a quart of blood disappears. It will be replaced immediately. And this is not a serious thing when one is healthy. But when things go bad, blood is all important. This is when it is crucial that all be in perfect working order. Sometimes you need up to 30 hearts to save a life, and you can't expect 30 hearts with the same blood type to show up simultaneously just like that. It's necessary for the specialists to have a ready reserve, especially for those rare kinds like type AB. Sometimes blood is kept complete with all of its parts together. More often, though, the individual parts are separated into plasma, red corpuscles, platelets, white corpuscles. Perhaps to save a life, red corpuscles might be needed. Another time, white corpuscles will be required, or platelets, or plasma will be called upon. Yes, you must be many to save a life. But the blood that you donate might save more than one life. Such is the large blood family. Blood is nothing when you're well. But when you're not, it's everything. And next to what they might endure, those who are very ill, Giving a drop of our blood is really nothing. The important thing is to have a heart. Yes, that's another thing hearts are sometimes for. <laughs>